What is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and today guys I'll be discussing the top 10 traveling creatures in all of Ark. So guys this applies to all maps and these are in my opinion the best 10 creatures for traversing any of the maps of Ark. So guys without further ado let's jump in to number 10. Now guys coming in at number 10 we have the Roll Rat. Now the Roll Rat is found on Aberration or any map with Aberration Caves. So for example, Valgiro Genesis Part 2 also has access to the Roll Rat. And this guy is great. He is one of the best land mounts for getting around due to him having the ability to roll repeatedly. Now, the only downside to this actual factor is that the saddle will take durability damage. But other than that, the saddle will gain speed the longer you go. It will cap out at a certain rate. As well as that, it will also plow through any terrain that is in the way stones trees all of it gets obliterated in the roll rats path now as well as that this does deal damage to enemy dinos and if you aren't able to kill them instantly you will just push them out of the way now this ability does scale with the roll rats stamina however it uses such little stamina that you will hardly notice it as well as that the roll rat is super easy tame to get all you need to do is passive tame it honey and if you are playing on Aberration, Honey is very easy to come across, and so are the Roll Rats. Now, like I mentioned, the only downside to the saddle is that it will take durability damage. But you can see here that just from that brief rolling where we've pretty much covered a pretty fat section of the map, the saddle has taken about 24 durability damage. Sorry, 14 durability damage. As well as that, the saddle is crafted at level 58. It is a little bit expensive, but by this stage you should have everything required to create the saddle for the Roll Rat. So I would heavily recommend getting yourselves a Roll Rat. It also does hit pretty hard, and it is a pretty chunky boy. This guy here was a 150 tamed. It's got 6k health, 1400 stamina, 600 weight. So you can definitely use these guys to ferry resources across the map, and you can see here that they hit pretty decently. As well as that, you can also use this guy to harvest up a huge amount of wood from trees as well. That is if you don't demolish them while blitzing through them in your rolling form. So as well as that, you can also equip passengers onto the Roll Rat saddle, so you can easily get around with your tribe mates in this guy, and honestly, it's just amazing. His roll does also scale with movement speed, so if you do pump movement speed on him, you will be rolling even faster with your Roll Rat. Now guys, coming in at number 9, we have the Plesiosaur. Now, the Plesiosaur is an aquatic tame, so obviously it will be living exclusively in the ocean, but this guy is one of the faster underwater tames. He is able to travel relatively fast. His stamina drainage as well is definitely on the lower side of things. And you can see here, he is a very big and chunky boy. Obviously not on par with the Moser or the Tuso. This guy still has a ton of health and can still hit very hard. As well as that, it also has a crap ton of weight and like I mentioned, stamina. You can bump movement speed on this guy as well and it will reflect with his movement speed. As well as that, his saddles do have access to a platform saddle in which you can equip benches, seats, stools in order to ferry other players around the map. You gain access to the Plesiosaur saddles at level 64 for his basic one and level 84 for his platform one. Both of these require a decent amount of resources, but nothing that you shouldn't be able to handle within literally like half an hour of finding out the engram. So I'd heavily recommend getting the Plesiosaur. It does only have one attack. In terms of taming it, it's relatively easy. All you need to do is find a pair of them, kill off the one that you don't want, or try and tame up both of them, and simply swim up until they stop following you, and they will reach their barrier and then go back down. You can repeat this process for as long as it takes until they are knocked out, and once that happens, you then have your very own Plesiosaur to scour the maps of Ark. So guys, let's move on to number eight. Now guys, coming in at number 8, we have the Trophio Nathus. Now this guy is kind of a reskin Tapihara, and he is rather difficult to find and tame. You will find this guy on the Crystal Isles, and in order to tame him, you have to chain bowl him. Now in order to do that, your best bet is to eat a rare flower, and that will cause it to aggro on you, and where you can lure it into a trap, and then chain bowl it from there. You do not need a saddle in order to ride this guy, however, equipping him with his saddle will cause him to go extremely fast due to the fact that it uses gasoline to turn into a jet 
powered engine. So you can currently see here, he also has a draft ability, but if we chuck his saddle on, we then have the capacity to actually use grenades and gasoline in order to fuel our adventure. You can see here by hitting the third control button, we are able to activate our jet propelled engine and take off. Now this is without holding down the sprint key. While holding down the sprint key, you can see here, we are able to fly really fast. As well as that, he does have the ability to do a bit of a glider ability, in which case his speed will also increase temporarily. And like I mentioned, he does have the ability to fire grenades as well. So if you want to get into a little bit of a dogfight, you can while traversing the map. As well as that, in terms of his weight and stamina, it's pretty solid. Not the best amount of stats you could get on a flyer, but nonetheless, he is still a flyer, in which case it makes traversing the map insanely easy because you can literally just fly over all threats. Now, like I mentioned earlier, he does have a wing draft ability, in which case if you fly past another flyer or large dino, you'll gain a temporary speed boost as well from that regards. And you can see down in the bottom left hand corner that that is his speed bar. The more that fills up, the more faster you will go. So guys, that is the Trophy Nathus at number eight. Let's move on to number seven. Now guys, coming in at number seven, we have the Wyverns. Now there are lots of variations of the Wyverns. You've got Ember, Blood, Fire, Poison, Lightning, Crystal, Ice. There's a ton of them. There's about eight different variations of Wyverns. All of these guys are insanely fast. They're easy to get around the map and use. And in terms of getting their eggs in order to actually hatch and raise your own one, it's relatively easy nowadays, especially with the introduction of Maywings. Getting Wyvern eggs has become insanely simple because of the Maywings glide ability and their ability to just fly through the air at super fast rates. That makes the Maywings capable of outflying and outspeeding the Wyverns. But each Wyvern has its own distinctive breath attack as well, which causes it to deal specific damage. And they're just a super fun mount to ride around and get around the map. So there's not really too much else to say about the Wyverns, except that they've all got their own individual breath attacks. They can be suited, suited to different purposes, so it's entirely up to you on what you want to use your Wyverns for. And each of them will have different color schemes and patterns. But nonetheless, I would heavily recommend getting yourself a Wyvern to travel around the map. And these guys did used to be the fastest base flyer in the game of Ark. So let's move on to number six. Now guys, coming in at number six, we have the Monagama. Now the Monagama is found on Extinction and Genesis part two. So you will need to keep an eye out for those guys if you want to get a Monagama from those areas. But these guys are relatively useful for traversing the map. They are a, I guess you could call them an aerial and a terrestrial team because they do have the ability to do a glide and dive bomb ability and then they will land and have to sprint. However, this really does use a lot of stamina on your Monagama. So you will need to make sure that you have relatively decent stamina on your Monagama, which after some breeding and level ups will be entirely possible. But these guys are fast at getting around the map due to their bomb diving ability, which you can see there. And that causes them to get around really fast. Now, like I said, you can only have three dashes or three jumps in the air. You can see there after that, we will not be able to use any more jumps through the air. So we'll either have to land or that's it. We don't have another option, just land or fall. So you can only use the dive ability once as well before you will have to land, which is rather unfortunate, but it is what it is. Now, as well as that, these guys do have an ice breath attack, which will freeze things if you don't want to fight them, or if you do want to fight them and try and kill them. As well as that, their saddle is learned at level 66 and it is super cheap in order to make it. You can see there, keratin, fiber, and hide. So super easy saddle to make, and you can get higher tier saddles for these guys as well. So I'd heavily recommend checking these guys out. And if you are playing on a PVP server and you come across enemy players, the Menagamas Ice Breath can freeze that enemy player and cause them to get dismounted. As well as that, they are a very good swimmer as well. I wouldn't recommend taking them for any deep diving adventures, but if you do come across some water systems in your way, these guys can easily traverse that with ease and speed. Now coming in at number five, we have the Griffin. Now the Griffin is found on Ragnarok and the Crystal Isles, and these guys are great for getting around. These were the OG gliders. These were the guys that could first do the glide ability, and this caused getting around the map super, super easy and super quick. 
Now, Griffins have a slower base flight speed than Wyverns. However, their dive ability makes up for that speed where they're able to dive bomb and just gain exponentially huge amounts of speed. Now, as well as that, you can use these guys on the ground as well to actually run along and sprint. They are more suited to flying in the air. However, that does not mean that you can't use them on the ground as well. They are able to attack and they do have a dive bomb ability. As well as that, you can also pull off a little maneuver where uh, you kind of fall in style, but fall in speed. So if you are gliding and you try and line up your, uh, your, di your dive, you can actually glide off the edge in technicalities and go soaring off the edge. Now, the only downside of the Griffins is that when you first get them, they don't have the greatest amount of stamina or weight and utilizing the diving ability does cost quite a bit of stamina. However, their attacks really make up for that. And you can see, I'm gonna try and pull off this dive ability. You can see that if you actually do this off a cliff face, you'll actually keep the speed that you have while diving. And you can see here, that uh, we are flying faster. We're falling faster than what we normally would. And all you need to do when you come close to the ground is simply hit your spacebar button and you'll take off, preventing any fall damage, which is absolutely great. Now, like I mentioned, they do have a dive bomb ability as well as a dive claw ability. And in order to pull this off, all you need to do is fly up, find your targeted prey like these vultures down here, hit the button while you are diving. And you can see there that we pull off the, the dive claw strike, I guess you could call that attack. And then next up, you have the dive bomb ability, which is a lot simpler to pull off. All you need to do is simply dive straight into the ground, and that will cause a shockwave that will go out and damage dinos in the area. Now, that attack will not do as much damage as your dive claw ability, so keep that in mind as well. However, you can spam that ability and sometimes even get two or three strikes off in one movement. Now, these guys don't require a saddle, which is awesome, so you can tame them at whatever level you want to, and I'll just showcase the damage of the dive bomb. You can see there, 311. So it is a little bit weaker than the dive claw attack, However, I'd still heavily recommend getting yourselves a Griffin because they're great mounts to ride around on and to fly on. You can't breed these guys, however, so do keep that in mind. But let's move on to number four. Now guys, coming in at number four, we have the Shadow Mane. Now the Shadow Mane is literally the pinnacle of Ark Dinos. This guy is incredible. He's fast. He's dangerous, he does a lot of damage, he's got a massive jump range, he has a teleport strike, he can swim extremely fast. The only thing that this guy can't do is freaking fly. And I think if he could fly, then we'd all be in a lot of trouble. The Shadow Mane is amazing. He is only tamed and found on Genesis Part 2, but once you tame him up using the trapped fish in the fish baskets, you will have yourself a tame that you can use for life. This guy has the ability to cloak himself, he has the ability to buff allied dinos if it is the male shadow main it is incredible so as well as that it also has a teleporting strike attack which you can see there will enable us to lock on to any teams in the area briefly stunning them and attacking them and dealing damage as well as that they do also have a thorns ability where if we are attacked by enemy dinos some of our damage some of that damage will be reflected back onto that dino like i mentioned earlier as well they do have the ability to jump very large distances you can see that we've just traveled a huge amount of distance they also run relatively fast they're obviously not the fastest tames but their jump ability and the ability to just get around with them so effectively easily makes up for that look at that distance that we got there now as well as that these guys have naturally inbuilt armor which scales with their wild level you can see here this is a perfect level 150 and it has come out with 125 armor you don't need a saddle for them, so these guys already overtake Rexes. Their stats are absolutely incredible. So much health, so much stamina, very solid amounts of weight and heaps of melee damage. Now, as well as that, they will receive a hydration buff, which you can see there in the top right hand corner, as well as that, they will receive a mate boost when they are with a female and a pack boost as well. As well as that, these guys are incredible at swimming. They swim super duper fast. So you can easily use these guys to get around any map of Ark, except for maybe Scorched Earth. You know, I wouldn't really, wouldn't really want to take these guys to Scorched Earth. You could definitely do a lot of damage with them, don't get me wrong. But uh, they're not the greatest for getting around Scorched Earth. But these guys tick all your boxes. They've got tons of weight, tons of health, tons of damage, plenty of movement abilities, plenty of movement speed. You can see there, look at that. We don't even need to run. We can literally just jump our way into the next bloody stratosphere here. So guys, let's move on to number three. 
Now guys, coming in at number three, we have the Rock Drake. Now the Rock Drake is found on Aberration and that is it, unfortunately. You can receive its eggs on Aberration, which is the only way to go about getting the Rock Drakes and they are pivotal for Aberration. And well, really any other map because they make getting around the map super easy. You can see here that they do have a glide ability and they also have the ability to dash to wherever the reticle points. This makes getting around the map super easy and super quick because as you can obviously tell, they are able to glide. They do gain extra speed when they are on that down motion trend and they are able to also cloak, climb up any sort of terrain or structure due to their sticky ability, their climbing ability. I don't know how to exactly call it, but this enables them to go upside down all of, all of the above. They are absolutely great for getting around anywhere and everywhere. Now, like I mentioned, they do have the glide ability and they can gain extra speed while flying downwards. You can see there that we do get a little bit of extra speed. Let's just come down here into the Wyvern Trench and you'll be able to actually see us gain increased speed. You can see here, it's actually that fast that I'm struggling to control it. Now, like I mentioned as well, they can dash between wall to wall or terrain to terrain. You can see here, as long as that reticle comes up, you will dash to whatever it is that you were aiming at. And you can see here that we are able to climb upside down as well on the Rock Drake. Now, he does have a sprint ability while on land as well. So keep that in mind. You can utilize that to get around as well. And these guys are relatively good swimmers as well. Considering that they weren't really made to swim, they do have very decent swim speed. Their attack damage is also very solid. Now, they do have two saddles as well, a standard saddle and a tech saddle. And you can see here, the standard saddle is learnt at level 75, relatively cheap to craft. All you need is red gems, metal ingots, and they will be the two things that you may struggle to get. It also has a tech saddle, which you can use, and it will fire weapons and laser blasts off the back of it. And you need to defeat, I believe, Alpha Rockwell for that to happen. Now, as well as that, they do have a cloaking ability as well, which enables you to cloak and hide yourself from enemy dinos. So any hostile, aggressive dinos in the area will not attack you while you are cloaked. As well as that, this ability is kind of simulated for aberration. They have the ability to detect reapers. When they detect reapers, their crests on the head will flare up and you'll be able to notice a very dramatic difference. Now, as well as that, like I mentioned, they do have relatively decent swim speed. You know, they're obviously not the greatest swimmers, but they can swim and get around relatively fast. So they definitely tick that all terrain sort of mode and you can take them underwater with you as well. So guys, let's move on to number two. Now guys, coming in at number two, we have the Maywing. Now, the Mailing was another introduced creature on the Genesis Part 2 map, and honestly, this guy is goals. He is, I should say they, are uh, crazy good at just traversing the map and doing everything. So these guys can travel around, they've got super good stamina, they have the ability to glide over air and over water and land. You can see here that if you land on water or land while you are using your sprint ability, you'll actually glide over land. Now this enables you to plow through pretty much anything on the land as well. Similarly to the Roll Rats rolling ability, this enables you to just mow through trees, stones, and you can actually go for quite a bit of time. You can see he was still going on with our May Wings gliding ability. You can cancel this and you can obviously jump again while in that. And this ability carries over onto the water as well. You can see here that we are able to glide over water as well. Now, the only downside to this is that the May Wings struggle to get a bit of height while in the air. They can gain a little bit, but you'll notice that your speed will drastically drift off and uh, you'll only be able to grab a couple of extra centimeters of height, which is unfortunate if you're living in a high area and you have May Wings with you, you will need to probably bring a fly with you because you'll find that your May Wing will struggle to get up into those high to reach places. But other than that, it does everything. It also feeds your young. You can pick up your babies and take them with you due to the May Wing saddle. It uh, has the ability to harvest berries and everything like that. It's a super easy tame to get. All you need to do is knock it out, feed it mud and all berries. It's an omnivore and it also has the ability to swim super fast. You can see there we're flying through the water. It has no oxygen stat, so you don't need to worry about drowning or anything like that. And this guy is great. Now, obviously you don't really wanna take this guy into combat because he's not really made for combat, but that's fine because you can easily just run away from literally everything. 
Now, as for the Maywing saddle, I believe it is learned at level, there you go, 19. Super easy to make, 170 fiber, 320 hide, and 30 metal ingots, and that is all you need. So, definitely would recommend grabbing yourself a Maywing or even a whole cluster of them because they also have the ability to produce eggs of every single kibble. So, if you are after exceptional kibble, extraordinary kibble, these guys will produce it. As well as that, you can breed them together and they will both produce offspring because they are both male and female. You can see that their gender is NA and that enables you to breed both of them and have two babies at hatching. So guys, let's move on to the number one creature. Now guys, coming in at number one, we have the Astrodelphus. Now guys, the Astrodelphus is found only on Genesis Part 2 in the space biome. These guys are super easy to tame up. They're a passive tame that utilizes element. Once you've got these guys tamed up, you can equip the tech saddle to them and this will enable you to accomplish all sorts of things. Now, the reason they're number one due to them having a tech saddle is because the tech saddle is relatively easy to come across on Genesis Part 2. You can find their tech saddle in the drops and like I've managed to find like at least 20 of these bad boys in the drops. However, if you do want to try and make it from scratch, you will need to be level 120. So you will need to have ascended at least once in order to get the Astrodelphus Starwing Saddle. It is a relatively expensive saddle to craft. Like I mentioned though, you can find this in plenty of the drops. You want to namely look in the white drops, I believe on Genesis part two. But once you get this saddle, you are literally the fastest thing in all of Ark. The tech saddle makes you fly super fast, you just take off. As well as that, they have the ability to dive as well and gain enhanced speed while diving. They can fire weaponry on the back of their saddle while in this mode as well. And leveling up their movement speed will also increase the tech saddle's movement speed when you activate your boosters, which is great. Now you can slow down, you can barrel roll, you can do a flip, you can do whatever the heck you want to on the back of your Astrodelphus. You can also fire grenades. Now, the really awesome thing about the Astrodelphus and the reason why they're at number one is because you can also take these guys underwater. That's right, these guys will fly underwater with the tech saddle, making them one of the fastest, if not the fastest creature in the air and in the ocean, which is why they take the number one spot. They don't have an oxygen stat, so you will not need to worry about dying you won't actually need any oxygen as well because the pod of the Astrodelphus saddle will protect you and provide oxygen to you through the entirety of your journey. So that is why the Astrodelphus is in the number one spot because it is both the ultimate air and sea tame to get in order to traverse any of the arc maps. So guys, that's going to wrap the video up for today. Let me know what you thought of this one down below. Let me know if you change anything. But other than that, guys, thanks very much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.